Hey, what's up, Zoners? Welcome to the Week 17 Beer Time Breakdown. Tonight, we have our starts of the week. We might even have a couple of those for you tonight. And then we have our secret starts of the week. Those players are available on your waiver wire to help you win a fantasy football championship. Hey, before that, we have our news and brews, where we're drinking news and talking brews. Hey, and then in between everything else, we have our Thursday night breakdown. We have our uh, what we got right, what we got wrong on our start and sit. If that sounds interesting to you, hold on for seven seconds. You can do it! Hey, what's up, Zoners? <laughs> this is Tyler, Big Turd Ward, and Jason, the lucky bastard. You the one coming at you live from the West Coast. And this is the Fantasy Red Zone. Today's episode, we are drinking. It is raining. Sorry about the rain. If you can hear the rain, man, that's just the way it is. You got to deal with it. Jason's sucking down some some suds. We had a crazy ass game last night, Jason. It was like uh, I don't know a blowout, dude. I hope you I hope you chose the over. I hope you chose the over, Jason. Hey, but before we get into all that craziness, Jason, would you please tell the public how they can help this show because we need it. Uh, if you made it this far, if you guys could please hit the subscribe, press the like. We like the likes. Leave a comment. Let us know. Did you start Joe fucking? Flacco. Flack around and find out, Jason. Flack around and find out. Get the flack out of here. <laughs> uh, we're also on the radio at the Spotify, the Fantasy Red Zone. Oh, yeah. We'll go over uh, if I was covering the Browns, Jason. I mean, I got. I think I got like one of them right. We'll go over that. But, yeah, you, you would think that losing Amari Cooper against the Jets was uh gonna be bad but i can't i can't tell you exactly when a team is gonna give up during the season i should have guessed this game for the jets apparently the chargers did it a couple weeks ago <laughs> yeah you know what i'm saying jason i mean that was just like they literally gave up like say they're like what are we playing for again i can't remember right are we play- this is a foosball foosball is for the deal all right dude let's get into that news and bruise jason let me take all a right, drink real fast because uh my dude has been out the entire fantasy football playoffs. It says a heel. I feel like the goddamn heel. I think I'm the heel. I don't even know what that means, but I'm pretty sure it's a negative, Jason. Yeah, I don't think it's H E A L either. It's not because. Not like the heel. I'm like something you step on, dude. Keenan Allen out again, Jason. We got goddamn Joshua Palmer out as well. Hope you're not starting each and stick on your. On your thing. Hey, let's talk about Austin Eckler being one of the biggest busts of the season. I know he got injured, man, but it doesn't matter. Even when he's healthy, this is terrible. So, Keenan Allen, man, if you were like me, drafted him, rode him all the way. He was the best wide receiver ever. Uh, Well, guess what, dude? He did not help you at all. He's not going to be on any championship teams this year, for the most part. I wonder if they're just sitting him out because the Chargers are out of contention. They're waiting for Jim Harbaugh. They're like, Jim Harbaugh called up. He's like, hey, I really like Keenan Allen. Sit his ass. I need him healthy for next year. <laughs> How's the weather in Los Angeles? I might be visiting. <sighs> it's about, it's balmy. San well, Diego, Jason. A whale's vagina. Yep, hey, uh, yep, yep. Uh, Gerald Everett. Are you playing him? Hell to the yeah. Jason, where does Keenan Allen go next year in fantasy drafts? Uh, probably the same spot. Was it round four? <laughs> I would guess about round three, four. And guess yeah. who's going to pick him up, Jason? You. Yeah. <laughs> Jason, next, oh, going on to the next one. The Jogwires ruled out Trevor Lawrence before. It's like four hours ago. They were going to go against the Panthers. So Trevor Lawrence, man, this makes me not like uh, So CJ Beathard has to go now. Man, one of the biggest disappoint- disappointments of the season. I was high on Calvin Ridley, Jason. I was like, Calvin Ridley's going to tear shit up this year. Well, he got his shit torn up this year, and now he's not going to be helping anybody in the championship. Nope. I mean, he helped get you there last week. I think he put up 20 points, but... This is like the first game that Trevor Lawrence is going to miss in his career, maybe? That fool got his ankle rolled up, Jason. And uh, he came back that week. So I don't understand anything what he does. 
He didn't even need a cart to get off the field, man. <laughs> the cart. I don't want the fans to see me. I've been a cart. Me out. Get that cart out of here. Get it out. <laughs> Sometimes I'm in Walmart and I'm like, dude, just get it. Bring me a cart. Bring me a cart. Yeah. Bring me a cart. Yeah. One of those power ones, man, because my knees hurt. <laughs> tired of bending down, picking up bread. All right, dude. <laughs> but, but yeah, dude, so Trevor Lawrence is one of the biggest disappointments of the season. Jason, the way he ended last year, and then, you know, Doug Peterson's second-year system, they got Calvin Ridley. Uh, Travis Kelsey, I'm going to put in his bust of the year almost. But, you know, we got, man, so many first-rounders busted. But, dude, uh, Trevor Lawrence, if you, you were relying on him, that's one of the few quarterbacks you kind of drafted early, Jason. Really? How early do you think he was drafted? I'd like to get a sense. He was of that. Uh, well, he was right after what? Just it was after like Justin Herbert. He was in that Justin Herbert, um, like round was, six, five. Yeah, and I mean, you could have waited. You could got Dak Prescott. Like, I mean, way later. I mean, I'm just saying, dude. Everybody, including us, Jason, we're like, this guy is the next top five quarterback in the league. But you and I also talked about that offensive line a lot. So. Yeah, it's horrible. Oh, so horrible. bad. Jace, Jason, here we go. Here we go. Satellite radio. Jalen Waddle is out for Sunday's game. So they are playing at Baltimore. And if Baltimore wins, they clinch the number one seed for the AFC. So there is motivation for this defense to perform well, even though I do see an, I mean, coming off of that San Francisco game, Jason, I, 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 am, I assume that they are going to be you know, not playing as well. So, but Tyree Kill, all by himself, Jason. How do you feel about that? Wait, the the Ravens are not going to be playing as well? Uh, I don't, because, yeah, because, so the Ravens need to win to, to clinch that playoff spot, but they just came off that huge game against uh, San Francisco where that was like a, you know, determined the goddamn MVP of the, of the league pretty much. Bunch of, I'm just saying, Jason. Like that was a huge game last week for the Ravens. I could see a kind of a letdown, a letdown game for them this week. So, would you start their defense? <sighs> I they saw are, something that they, they have. Like, like I can't remember. Oh, they're at Baltimore. Yeah, I'd start their defense at Baltimore. I saw. I, I wish I could really remember the stat, but I I think <sighs> they lead the league in sacks, and they're like up there with interceptions. No, they're Those good, but like points. when they're playing at Baltimore, I feel a lot better about that, even though the Rams went in there and kind of fucked them up. Well, the Rams <laughs> is a different species right now. They're they're the Phoenix. So Tua Dunk Viola takes a hit, Jason, though. I, I would I would assume that. So Tua Dunk Viola, if you were I mean you I would have said, Hey, he's now I, 2020, man, you should have started Joe Flacco over Tua, but now Tua's gonna have a tough matchup this week. Yeah, Baltimore leads the league in uh, sacks per game, and uh, the Dolphins are second. Well, shit, dude. Um, Goddamn. All right, here we go, Jason. Josh Jacobs is officially a game-time decision. Pretty much doubtful. Michael Mayer out, and they are going against the Colts. The Colts' defense is god-awful. So, Josh Jacobs, man, had the easiest, I think he had the second easiest playoffs uh, schedule for running backs. And he has not been available for any of it. This reminds me of Keenan Allen, for God's sakes. Yeah. Looks like all those uh, hits he takes from um, Russian ball finally paying his dividends. And you know, Jason, I talk about all this shit. Like, man, I shouldn't have traded. I shouldn't have traded. You know, all this, even though Devontae Adams sucked and all that stuff. But, dude, I... I tried to trade for Josh Jacobs a long time ago for the playoff run because of his playoff schedule. Dude, it's just about luck, dude. You can't predict injuries. You can't predict right. situations. Right. It's just uh, you do what you can do in that moment and um, believe in your decisions because later on, dude, you're going to feel stupid, but it's not that way. You are not stupid. You are smart. Yeah, the Raiders actually have um, the second best running back schedule in the playoffs, and we can see it. With Zamir White killing it right now. My, my, play. mama mia, Zamir, we go again. Nice. I got that, 
from our league, Jason. Yeah, Mamma Mia, Jameer, <laughs> we go again. Yeah, that wasn't my name. <laughs> it wasn't my name either. Dude. I'm big turd. I'm big turd. My team's big turd, laying big turds. Jason Puka Nakua did not practice, and he's listed as questionable. They are expected to play, and uh, I would say that uh, Puka Nakua plays every almost every week, dude. He's like he got fucked up a couple times this year, and he continues to play. Continues continues to produce. I actually have Puka ranked higher than Cooper Cup this week. I think that guy just plays off of uh, morphine. A couple injections before the game, and he's good to go. Because he's been on the injury report list all season, but he plays. Remember that time where I was like, dude, he's out for the season, dude. There's no way he's coming back. <laughs> and he like came out of the locker room, and he's all and scoring touchdowns. I'm like, what is going on? This guy was crying and couldn't even move his upper body, and now he's running out on the field. Jason. Isaiah Pacheco came back. They need him, right? Because this team sucks. They need a running back on this team. Well, he's in the final stage. He got a concussion at the end of that game, dude. Now he's in the final stages. He practiced today. And if he clears, uh, let's say, he will play. So it looks like he's on track to play this Sunday. That is huge for Pacheco owners. Um, I was a Pacheco doubter this year, and uh, half the year I was wrong, half the year I was right. So it's just kind of how it is with the unpredictable, Jason, um, with those Matt running Nagy. backs over there. Matt Nagy. Yeah, I wonder, uh, did he get a concussion from the table or his lineman? What did he do to the table? <laughs> you, don't, you don't remember, like... He got he got hit in the back of the head, and they're like, "Go sit on this table real quick, and so we could like uh, observe you, like oh, you have a concussion." Okay. And he went and sat at the table, and he was like sitting there, and then it collapsed, and then he fell. He like, Bah! Dude, I was watching Tom Brady headbutt his uh, like lineman and shit like uh, today on some old NFL shit. It's like, dude, uh, they would outlaw that today. He like fucking headbutted the shit out of people, man. Who did? It's like good game. Boom! They like score a touchdown. Tom Brady. Oh, it's like yeah. First team that. defense. Spot on the table. Yeah, I don't think they cared if they did to Gronk because Gronk was already like. He Jason, ball. I mean, I, I keep on ball. trying to get that Gronkowski rookie card. It's like a hundred bucks, dude, for the for the primo. Oh, you know what? If we had a thousand subscribers, that'd be pocket change. Yeah, I don't think we get what. I, don't tell the public this, man, because we, we don't get paid. I don't even, with, for a thousand for, with a thousand subscribers, I'd like to know how much we get paid. Hey, Patreon coming next year. Please support us. Let's go. <laughs> hey, Jason, I'll be right back. Here we somebody, go. Somebody was somebody was at the door. I'll be right back. All right. Two I'm seconds. Keep on talking because Jason probably ordered food. If you can afford food delivered to your door, please leave a comment because only my wife can afford that at my house. And I'm like, holy shit, dude. Uh, I will drive. Let's go. <laughs> Chris Olave is good to go. Chris Olave has an amazing, amazing matchup. So Chris Olave turned it back up last half of the season. Do you remember when Chris Olave was like the worst fucking bust in the league this year for your fantasy team? Well, he turned that shit around. So Chris Olave, good on you. I still wish Jameis Winston was starting because Chris Olave would be the number one goddamn wide receiver in the league. But that ain't happening. Let's move on. Yeah. What's up, dude? I was like, you probably got to start this whole off. Oh, I would just say Chris Olave is good to go. And I was just like, yeah, dude, he's fucking the best wide receiver in the league. If, if, uh, what's his name? Deep throat and W's. I, just, I keep on trying to get a clear picture of Jameis Winston, deep throat and a W, but they're all blurry. So I can't use it for our thumbnails. I think that's good. I think that's good. <laughs> Since I want it, Jason. I messages. want it. <laughs> mixed messages. All right, dude. You have to answer, Jason. Who was knocking on your door? Uh, Wingstop. <laughs> Damn, you got yeah, but you got boneless wings, you boneless motherfucker. Yep, I got. The, we I don't got, get. I, I suck. We don't get bones. boned in this house. I sucked them. I'm all, oh, blah, blah, blah. all right, Jason. I saw this and I was like, dude, Marquise Brown actually has a great matchup. Is this true? It says Cardinals wide receiver Marquise Brown is going on IR. 
So we're gonna be just discussing that a little later. Yeah. So so stick around to see if that's true. And then, dude, how about Trey McBride? How is Trey McBride doing, Jason? You on him? Yeah, matchup proof, bro. Is he start? Is he playing? Yeah. Oh my God, he's gonna score thirty points. Okay, so that's the start of the week for somebody, probably. Let's talk about uh, Michael Pittman, dude, Junior. Cleared uh, protocol, concussion protocol. We'll talk about him later as well. He was fucking killing it, dude. He had like nine targets in the first quarter, and then he got a concussion, laid out all the way, and now he's at home. And newsflash, uh, what's his name? Plays well at home, Minshew. So look for a big game, Jason, from him. They're playing the Raiders, right? Uh, correct. Okay, just making sure. All right. Hopefully, dude, then- you have better luck with him being your star of the week than me. I didn't say he was my start of the week. Oh, okay. Remember when I did? He got bent in half like Johnny Knox. Um, let's see. Yeah, now I'm just kind of looking at um <clears throat> DK Metcalf, dude. He missed the final two practices of the week, and he's now he's going to be a game time decision. I think that's kind of crazy because uh, he was. I, I thought about him being my start of the week because he's really good against what? man, and I forget who they're going against, but uh, man. They play heavy man. Who do they play? I just kind of talked about Kenneth Walker earlier. Oh, well, okay. Yeah. He just, he's got a, his catch rate gets to improve. His what has to? Catch rate. Oh, yeah. I mean, if he catches like, if he gets like over 50% catch rate, dude, he dominates. Uh, Kyler Murray's sick, but he's limited during practice. He's, li- he's listed as questionable. And now he's got missing people. I was going to have Kyler Murray as the start of the week, but then I saw all these uh, things working against him, and I don't like it, Jason. I don't like it at all. He's got a lot of injuries. Got a good matchup, though. And uh, that pretty much wraps it up, except for Cortland Sutton. He is in concussion protocol, did not practice. Oh, he has been ruled out, Jason. So uh, you do not want anything to do. I traded for Javante Williams because of goddamn running back injuries. Thank you very much. And, uh, yeah, dude, guess what? what? He sucks. The Broncos sucks. They are gearing up for next year. I I would not be surprised, though, if Javante Williams, Jason, got about 10 targets this game. What about Jerry Judy? Can he get the targets? Jerry Judy can S the D. Oh, I didn't know he could do that. Hey, man, if you if I heard that Marilyn Manson told me one time, if you remove the two bottom ribs. I told you. He told you that. S the D. That was a uh, that was one of those you know uh, rumors going around when we were kids, Jason. Urban about legends. Manson. I remember that. Say? It was an urban legend. I remember <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah, about Marilyn Manson. Yeah, I was like, I got a new neighbor one year, like a kid, and I was like, Hey man, did you hear about Marilyn Manson? <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to be like, Hey, I know things. I know things. And this you before went to his mom and was like, hey, did you hear about me? I was like, you're never talking to that kid again. Yeah. All right, here yeah. we go, Jason. That is it for news in brews. Thank you very much. Now, let's get into that Thursday starts of the week, Jason. Or not Thursday starts of the week. Start sit. You want to go first? For Thursday? Well, goddamn. I'm trying to understand what you said. Night. So. We're doing the game. We're not doing so. We're doing the player pause. Correct. Okay. Just real a quick recap. I want to see uh, what you got right, what you got wrong, real fast. Uh oh, man, I gotta try to remember. Oh, you gotta check. You gotta check. I think. I mean, I only had five players, but I think I got them all right. Are you kidding me? Did you really? Yeah, I think the only person I said to play was Brees Hall. <laughs> that's that's all I said so, to play. That was good. What'd you say about uh Trevor Simeon? No. Sit. Um Wait. what's his name? Uh Garrett Wilson, sit. Yeah. Tyler Conklin, sit. Yeah. And this one guy named Xavier Gibson, sit. <laughs> <laughs> Jason. 
That is your best of the season. Let me know how That's it feels. It. How does it feel, Jason? It's the second time I've done that this season. Oh, so. oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm real sorry. Well, I mean, I just want to make sure the people know. <laughs> okay. I just want to make people sure that people know. Uh, let's see. Where is well, my let's just say It's been a while. I think the second time was uh, week two with the Minnesota Vikings. So it's been a while. It's been a while. Uh, <laughs> since week two. Man, I sent Ooh. myself. I sent myself something, and now I can't even, uh... Oh, wait, inbox. Or how about sent? Yeah. Uh, sorry, I was trying to figure out... Oh, play, here we go. I'm trying to find my, um... My file, Jason. But, okay, so I said to sit Joe Flacco, right? I was like, hey, man, you're in the, uh... You're in the fantasy football uh, championship. You don't want to rely on Joe Flacco versus the Jets. Well, Jason, I fucked that up. Um... You flack around, I flacked around and found out, Jason. Yeah. Uh, as a, how do I put this? Final, or fantasy football finalist, I too bench Joe Flacco. Who did you start? Who did you start over Joe Flacco? Jalen Hurts. Well, I probably would have, uh, but that seems like a pretty goddamn good idea, Jason. Jerome Man, Ford. Maybe. I was like, hey. He's going to catch some passes. You know, uh, the, the what you get against – I mean, you have to uh, – the running backs have to catch passes against the Jets. Well, shit. You got, what, two touchdown passes, Jason? I was right on that one. Yeah. And as a fantasy football finalist, I have Jerome Ford on my bitch. I uh, – that's the thing. If you made the finals, dude, you probably have some decent running backs. You probably – you're like – if I had to guess, if you made the finals, you had at least three good running backs. So you're looking at Jerome Ford, who's one of those decent running backs. And you're like, I'm not going to start this guy against goddamn Jets. So I, I have, totally get it. Uh, I have 50, 50 points on my bench between two players. And then my starting running backs was Kyron Williams and Rashad White. Jason. Yeah. I do want to say... That uh, Kareem Hunt, I said to pause him, but I also said, like, literally, he's gonna get ten. He's gonna get like double digit carries for thirty yards and a touchdown. If it if if he gets like you know, but he's touchdown dependent. So I'm gonna give myself a pass on that one because he got thirty well, yards I, and a touchdown. Well, that's good. That's only like nine points. I know, but it's just like, dude, I like. It's just funny because I was like. He's so touchdown dependent. I bet you gets like 30 yards and he might get a touchdown. But, you know, it's like 50 50. Do you really want to bet on that? Like, but you, but you said to pause him, right? Yes. So, what, that, that, that doesn't count, even though I predicted what it was? I don't, I, don't under, I don't understand. Why would you pass it? Didn't you get it right? You said to pause him and he only got nine points. I know, but he got a touchdown, Jason. I just but, thought it was like, I was like, so dude, he got a, got a touchdown. And it was, they only got six points. That means that's a pass. Fine. One yard. I got I'm, it. I got it. Get, All right. I'll give, myself, I'll give myself. i give myself a plus. I did. I there gave myself go. a plus anyways because I predicted the goddamn like total yards and touchdown. Okay. Nice. All right. And I did say that Pierre Strong is the most efficient guy on this team. I don't understand why they don't play him more, but whatever. Uh. All right. Real fast. I need to get through this faster. Uh. Play Amari Cooper. I'm a jackass. I got that one wrong. And I said yeah. to pause Elijah Moore. I got that wrong. So there's two X's right there. Well, you can't really X a hurt player. You didn't even play. Well, I guess I didn't do my research uh, well enough because I was just like, I was just checking out the matchup. I didn't even look to see that he was doubtful. I didn't hear anything about that shit. I don't even know what he was out for. No one did. No one did. I know people are, I mean, <laughs> what they were like, put him when they, when he wasn't practicing, they said he was resting. Oh, okay. I, so I was like, like, dude, I heard nothing about Amari Cooper being injured. I heard nothing. Yeah, when they said that he was out, I was like, what What happened? Did he get a car accident? Okay, cool. Because I was like, I didn't even check it out because I was so pissed off. I was like, Tyler, you need to do your goddamn research. I thought I did. Okay, well, that makes me happy. All right. I said to play David Njoku, and I also said when Amari Cooper went out, I said, this is a big bump to Njoku. 
and a hit to Flacco. Little did I know, you flack, I, you flack around, you find out. Yeah. Um, they've been a pretty solid combo. Najoku is going to be on some championship teams. That's for sure. All right, Jason. Then I said to play the defense. I didn't, I didn't even check to see what the defense got, but they did a lot of 17 points. So, yeah, dude. Got that one right. And then I said to play Dustin Hopkins. <laughs> And uh, Dustin Hopkins was out, dude. So I said to I said to play two players that were out. I felt I felt like an asshole last night. As you should, as you, you should, led, as you led me astray. No, that's loose butthole, man. I felt like a loose butthole last night. That was not tight butthole of me. Jason, yeah, you remember? I, <laughs> yeah, Blake from Workaholics. Workaholics, and they were like around. They were. It's called like model combat. And they're trying to be a model, and they're talking about loose buttholes. You can't be talking about loose buttholes for our kids, man. <laughs> yeah. And you did when you were Blake for uh, Christmas for Halloween one year. You were all and and I look and I look just like him. All right, that is our match. That's our what we got right, what we got wrong. But did you get anything out of that game, Jason? Because all I got is that uh, the Browns are going to be are better than we thought, but at the same time, um, the Jets gave up on that fucking game. So yeah, but I, I the Browns in, in the playoffs, dude, is pretty scary. Yeah, are they becoming one of the favorites for the Super Bowl? The way Joe Flacco is playing, I do want to point out that Joe Flacco had like 300 yards in the first half, and he only had like 10 in the second half. Yeah, because I was, I saw David and Joku was like he's gonna have like 200 and something yards, and then yeah. he didn't get catch another pass. I do think the defense for the Jets did pick up. They did. They went. They did better in the second half. Brees Hall. This is just like a taste of what we could have got all season long, every week with Aaron Rodgers playing. And it's just like making me already think for next year. It's like, dude, how early do I want to get Brees Hall if Aaron, with Aaron Rodgers coming back? And same with Garrett Wilson. You know, Garrett Wilson has been struggling to put up big numbers week in and week out, but it's not really. He's getting the targets. I think. He leads the league in targets, if I remember right. Just his catch rate is so low. His uncatchable uh, target rate, attempt rate, whatever, uncatchable ball throws from his quarterbacks is like 67%, which is like horrible. It's like the 60th in the league. So when you got Wilson throwing you the ball, you got Trevor Simeon throwing you the ball. Just imagine Aaron Rodgers was throwing this dude the ball and still getting all these targets. Dude, I had Brees Hall, Jason, in the first round on my – you know, and I predicted the first round of the next year, like a month and a half ago. So, but that comes with all the off season hype. Cause I guarantee you after this year, dude, running backs are going to be like, you got to get a running back. We're all going to be next. All the fantasy uh, experts. You got to get it running back. Oh my God. You need a workhorse running back. And it's going to be like, Brees Hall gets the fucking ball all the time. He is a workhorse running back. And I guarantee they put a bunch of money into that offensive line, but who knows, man, until it works on that goddamn team. They have to. And you know what's funny, though? It's like the Jets, man, they really <sighs> screwed up. You know, Flacco was on their team last he year. He called the Jets, Jason. He called them. Hey, man, uh, I heard you need a quarterback. <laughs> exactly. They're like, I don't want to piss off Aaron Rodgers. We already have one old fucker. We don't need another old fucker. I'm almost as old as them. Gah! I mean, just imagine if he was still <laughs> playing for the Jets all, all season long. But Brees Hall. With Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson could be the Mari Cooper right now. I know, dude. All right. All right, Jason. That is the Thursday night wrap up. How do you feel about that? I felt good. It felt good. Like, there's not a lot to take out of that game other other than uh, Joe Flacco's a lot better. He's, I, I, he's pretty much matchup proof right now. I guarantee they would probably beat the Kansas City Chiefs, probably in Kansas City, which I. Might be happening this week. I, I I heard that on the radio today. Um, when the Jets, dude, they need a fucking offensive line and a reboot. So mm-hmm. they really do. They, they have need. like one of the worst lines in the league. They need depth uh, on their line, dude. They need Alan Fanica to come back out of retirement. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, you want to come back? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, dude. So starts of the week, Jason. I think you have two tonight. Yeah, How do you I gotta, feel about sharing your first start of the week? 
You know what? Sharing is caring. First one is... J nope, 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 not that one. DeAndre Swift. Dude. Swifty. Did he not get, like... He got a touchdown last week, Jason. Did he get called back? No, he got a touchdown last week. Because I thought he got two, because... Uh, I just don't think I think that the ESPN was kind of messing up the uh, stats for a while because I watched it with my own eyes. Him do that cut back all the way, dude. Right? Oh, he he did. Yeah, okay, I get what you say. Like he did have another touchdown, but it was reversed. Oh my god! I so like right when he scored that touchdown, I had to leave and do something. I was like, man, DeAndre Swift coming through, man. That playoff schedule, and yep. I did not see a touchdown. And then he got another touchdown later. I was like, holy fuck! Did he get two touchdowns? So great start of the week, Jason. Yeah, uh, he is ranked 19th for Week 17 for running backs. He's a ranked 19th running back for Week 17. He goes against Arizona, who gives up the most points to running backs at 29 a game. <laughs> 20, 29, what? Yeah, maybe. Uh, 29 points a game, and it's been even worse the last three weeks. They are surrendering 37 points to running backs in the last three weeks. The Cardinals give up the most rushing yards a game at 147. The Cardinals are 37th in rushing yards per attempt allowed at 4.7. And the Cardinals opponents average 31.5 rushing attempts a game. And yes, you know it's true, Tyler. That is the most in the league. Swift had 20 rushing attempts last week, and he had 18 carries the week before. And out of those two weeks, he is averaging 4.3 yards per carry. The Eagles are favorite in this game by a lot and can build a lead quick and then run the ball out. It's one of the best offensive lines going against one of the league's worst defensive lines. A touchdown might be vultured by Jalen Hurts or prevented by Jason Kelsey, but it's quite possible that this guy's going to at least rush for 100 yards this game. They're not even there. I was, talk I was talking to no one. Uh, and the reason why I say that is because he would have had a touchdown in week 15, but he ran into Jason Kelsey, <laughs> kind of Jason Kelsey kind of tackled him. And then, you know, you get to the one, two yard line, Jalen Hurts comes in and takes over. So dude, Jalen Hurts has had so many rushing touchdowns this year. I, I haven't checked, but, uh, guarantee he's probably leading the league right now. And, uh, cause I have him as a goddamn quarterback and I'm like, Thank God for his rushing touchdowns, Jason. Otherwise, he would be doing terrible. Yeah, and that's and that the all comes at the expense of DeAndre Swift. And remember those two 100-yard games at the beginning of, beginning of the season, Jason, that DeAndre yep. Swift had? Yep. In the very beginning. But they need to run the ball more, man. Like, as a team, I think they realize that. So, but yeah, dude, watching that game last week with, with my dad, with my daddy, he did. Uh, I thought that. I thought that, uh, I love you, Dad. Dude, my, my niece kept on saying, I love you, Dad. And it was off some cartoon that was fucking hilarious. I can't, she can't remember what it was. Anyways, though, Jason, I kept on saying, no, Daddy, no. And I was like, "Who? what is that off of? No, Daddy, no. It's like some guy, like some buff guy on the phone, and he's like, his dad's going to beat him. I don't remember. It's off an of Adam Sandler movie. I can't remember what it is. Comment down below if you remember that movie. I could just Google it, but. You, you and I used to say it all the time, Jason. No, Daddy, no. No, Daddy, no. Your dad's going to get mad. <laughs> Is it Big Daddy? Maybe it was. I can't remember what it was. Uh, But, yeah, DeAndre Swift, man, I, I think the biggest question of the offseason, Jason, is if Kelsey, Jason, Jason Kelsey is going to come back for another year. That's I gonna doubt be, it. That's going to be huge. I don't think he will. I think this he is does, for him. Dude, I'm, like, out on the goddamn Eagles next year. Yeah, but to, uh, to go on about this, this is not going to be a shootout for the Eagles. This is going to be probably get 21 nothing on the Cardinals and then just run the ball. He had 20 carries last week. He had 18 carries the week before. Cardinals give up a lot in the rushing game. The only thing that is, I believe, that is preventing Swift from getting over 100 yards is that they're up by 40 points and they take him out in the fourth quarter. Well, what about the uh, Gannon being the defensive coordinator? Now he knows he knows how to attack uh, Jalen Hurts, Jason. That's good. Attack Jalen Hurts, but not DeAndre Swift. 
I, I was thinking about that because I was like, dude, people are talking so much shit about the Arizona Cardinals in this game. But I was like, dude, do you remember that um, Gannon was the defensive coordinator? I do remember, but I also remember he coaches the Cardinals. <laughs> and there's no one on the Cardinals defensive line that or defense at all that you should be afraid of. Well, Banjo ran out into the rain, and now he's back, and he's fucking soaked. And I don't have... Oh, yeah, wet dog. Smell I got like a wet dog. I got a towel right here. I'm t- oh, boy. Can I pet that dog? Have you ever seen that? Can I pet that dog? Can I pet that dog? And it's a bear. Can I pet that, <laughs> is that, what, that, is that, is that what that is? That's funny. Yeah. All right, dude. Let's get into my start of the week. Do you think it's going to be somebody good, Jason? I have a feeling it's going to be Minshew. No, Minshew is one of my secret starts. I want, uh, you know what? We haven't heard it for a while. Probably uh, Wilson, Michael Wilson. Dude, I thought about that too. That mm-hmm. should be a secret start. Jaden Reed, I hope he fucking plays this week. <laughs> oh, I know. Oh, my gosh. He needs to play. Their wide receiver core is so beat up right now. So, to piggyback on what you just said, Jason. Let's see. Watson, Christian Watson, Deshaun, and uh, Deve- Deve- shit, I can't remember his name, but Wicks, guys that's been catching some touchdowns, have not been practicing, dude. The game's 44.5 uh, over and under. Ties the week's uh, for the fifth highest, Jason. So, And the fan duel impl- implies Green Bay will score 21.5 points. Dude, Green Bay is allowing the fourth most points in the league over the last three games. And the scary thing is, is that, you know, the my Vikings are starting goddamn J- Jalen Hall or whatever his name is. So there's a chance that the Vikings won't score mo- much, not forcing the Green Bay to throw a lot. But I'm just I'm just saying, dude, the Green Bay defense has literally been like the worst in the league almost over the last month. And Reed is questionable. Dude, Minnesota plays zone at the seventh highest rate. Minnesota has a 9.3 yards per reception rate. In a per reception in zone coverage that is tied for the second best, so they are good at zone. But Jaden Reed, uh, he's a team leader in fantasy points per route run versus zone 0.42 and target rate 22 percent. He's our leader in target rate, regardless of man or zone. Let's see, yeah, and see, this is the big thing though, Jason, because I know I know my team, my team blitzes the fuck out of the ball, dude. They're like, they blitz, blitz, blitz. So Jaden Reed, he uh, is the most volume. He gets the most targets earned on blitz dropbacks. So 29 targets on blitzes this year. And he has a 4.6 yards after the catch reception receptions or whatever per receptions during those targets. So like when people are blitzing, dude, they he's like the hot read, and he gets a lot of yards after the after the catch. So and then the fucking Vikings, dude, they blitz the league's highest rate. 55.2%. So if he plays with the lack of receivers, you know, like uh, Dobbs is going to be there. That's that's great, but whatever. But this receiver is the guy to get when they're blitzing, and they're, and they're going against the highest rate blitzing team in the league. So Andy's going to face off against the slot receiver, the, the, the worst cornerback for the, for the uh, Vikings. Vikings. Metellus. So, Tell dude, who? like, he's ranked 35th out of – Oh shit! Yeah, in catch rate, thirty-seven. He allows an eighty-seven percent catch rate, Jason, and he's dead last in yards allowed per coverage snap. So, and he's the second worst in yards per pass, uh, explosive par- pass plays per rate or whatever, dude. So, fucking terrible cornerback. Nobody else is healthy. He is the wide receiver to target when they blitz. He's going against the goddamn team that blitzes the most. Jaden Reed. Against my Vikings is probably a really, really good play this week, but he's got to play. <laughs> yeah, do you know how often he plays in the slot? I did not check that because he, I, I think it's his main reading. position, though, right? Uh, I assume so because PFF was calling out this cornerback, and when they do that, they usually only do that when that's the majority of the position they played. Nice. But at the same time, Jason, you called me out. You got me. You got me, okay? Back off. No, no, no. I'm, no, he probably is a slot because you're saying that he's the most targeted guy on blitz. It's usually the slot or, like, tight end. I'm just messing with you, Jason. Um, I do. <laughs> I am going to challenge you here a bit because we're going to rewind a little bit. 
there was a time when you said I will not have a start of the week as a quarterback I do not trust. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. Mm-hmm. But my Yo, my problem explain is explain yourself. My problem is like I really wanted uh, Michael Pittman as my start of the week, but I was just like I at this point in the year to find a non obvious wide receiver start of the week is kind of tough. So I'm just going with it. Yeah, but I mean when it comes. It's like you could have Jordan Love as your quarterback, and you could well, get... Jordan Love. Since I said that shit, has turned it around as well. He heard you, man. He's like, Tyler, gets... you're from my hometown. Yeah, words get words get uh, spread around in good old Bakersfield. I heard you're from the butthole of, the, of America, just like me. Tyler, you're tearing me apart. That's what he I was, was saying. in Bakersfield, and they kept on saying, "Tyler, you're tearing me apart." <laughs> Man, uh, Ray kept on being like, is this fog or, or smog? Fog or smog? And I had no <laughs> idea, Jason. It was like, just check your breathing. <laughs> if you're coughing, it's likely smog. And you're likely coughing. <laughs> so, yeah, dude, Jason Re- uh, J- Jaden Reed, for me, who is your second start of the week, Jason? Okay, I'm just going to uh, just a little throw this out there for people to kind of, like, pay attention to. Um, it is... The other side of the Eagles game, and that is James Conner. And he's ranked running back 18th for the week. For the week. For the week. Eagles give up 17 points to running backs. Jason, you've gone crazy. That's not good. (laughs) That's not good at all. The last three games, Saquon Barkley, Kenneth Walker, and Tony Pollard have scored over 16 points against these Philadelphia Eagles and they are giving up 23 points to running backs in the last three games. Well, now you're starting to understand. Now you're starting to understand. I understand. Over 50, oh, thank you. Over 15 points in the last three games. Uh, oh, James Conner has scored over 15 points in the last three games and he has scored 15 points and 18 points <sighs> against two run-stopping defenses in the 49ers and the Chicago Bears. The two games Marquise Brown got hurt and missed combined, or Connor combined eight targets, eight receptions, and a touchdown. Well, Tyler, you said it earlier in the in this episode. He is Marquise Brown is now in the IR. And the Cardinals are going to play catch up against the Eagles in this matchup. So I expect volume and success. That's very good, Jason. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, hey man like uh james connor dude i can't remember where he was drafted i know he's drafted ahead of moster and um i think kenneth walker but james connor he was good and then he got injured and he's been trying to come back and he's just not this offense has not been the same so i still like kyler murray when i watch kyler murray i believe in him and i believe in kyler murray Dude, Kyler Murray has a great matchup this week. So just get James Conner into some red zone situations, Jason. And he's got he's a two touchdown man waiting to happen. Yeah, I think that's exactly it. I think when you get into the red zone, like you got you got McBride, you got that guy, but there's no there's really no one else for the red zone when it gets close in uh, court. Like what's it, Greg Dork? Greg Dork, he's more kind of a he's not passing the torch to anybody. No. Uh, Connor, I expect for him to get uh, the same amount of targets, same amount of receptions with Marquise Brown gone. And they're going to play catch up. You know, they're going to be down 20 nothing, 21 nothing. They're going to have to be throwing the ball. And I think he's going to be involved in the passing game. Yeah, and dude, he's running and, uh, quite well. Who was your first start of the week, Jason? It was. Uh, it's the guy on the other side, DeAndre Swift. Where do you th- or I, I'm just interested. Where do you think DeAndre Swift, like right now, I think DeAndre Swift would probably be going like probably in like the fifth, fourth or fifth round, fourth, fifth round yep. next year. It would have to be because like he, he started off really good. He started off great. And then he just got that long string of games in the middle of the year that he was just not doing anything. Luckily, he's kind of doing something right now. Hopefully he continues in this week for the finals. But there was a long stretch where he wasn't doing anything. And I'm, I don't really want to draft a player like that in the first, like, three rounds. You know, I want more consistency. No, in the first three rounds, you need, like, hits. So, like, in the fourth yeah. round, you start getting to, like, 
uh, maybe they're, you know, question marks, like serious question marks. So, yeah. Jason, you look cool with a black hat and black sweatshirt. I don't know if you'd plan that. I mean, this is what I normally wear on Fridays. <laughs> no, you don't. All right. Yeah, this is where, literally what I wear to work every Friday. Really? Black sweatshirt, yeah. yeah. But James Conner next curves, year, Jason, who would go for? I think that uh, DeAndre Swift, Swift would go ahead of James Conner next year still. What do you think? I, I think so. Yeah, I think so. So these are two like uh, running backs that are probably going to be going in that dead zone next year. Mm-hmm. Good call. That's <clears throat> probably exactly right. And the older James Conner gets him, like, holy fuck, dude. Yeah, and it's crazy. He's good, man. He He's a good running back. He's on a really, really shitty team. Yeah. And he's getting older, like you said. That's the thing. All right, bruh. All right, bruh. Let's get into my... I've got a couple uh, secrets, Jason. Do Where tell. Do tell. My trend vibe. I've got yeah. Go check out uh, if you're if you're into if you're about 37 years old, go <laughs> check out Adam Sandler. Well, I've got a secret or whatever. I've got we, a we secret. We waited until midnight for that release. I was dating some chick at the time. Yeah, and that came yeah, out. I, man, I thought that was so funny. I was I was so high. <laughs> yeah. I was like, fucking it, sucking it, fucking it, sucking it, fucking it, sucking it. Talking about oh, that's when I got introduced to Nick Swardson, Jason. Nick Swardson. Do you know who Nick Swardson is? Yeah, hey, he's in the music video. Yeah, he was the, and he's also in. Uh, he's also in Grandma's uh, Boy, Reno Nine One One as a rollerblader. Oh, yeah. That too. All right, Jason, we need to talk about this because everybody else is talking about this. Baker Mayfield. I just want your quick opinion about Baker Mayfield this year. I'm starting him. I am starting him. I think. Can we kind of throw out there like fantasy MVP maybe? Because <laughs> you probably, I the people out there, the zoners probably drafted Baker Mayfield super late <laughs> or not at all. And now, me, I'm using Baker Mayfield. Yeah, throw that can. And so, it, it's kind of crazy, but we've been saying this for a couple of weeks now. The Buccaneers' offensive line has been great this season. And I feel like if you could even give me that amount of time to throw the ball, I know to throw it to Mike Evans or Chris Godwin. <laughs> and I could probably look pretty damn good, too. So, Baker Mayfield, Sean McVay they got rid of him. I mean, they had him, dude. But at the same time, he was pretty, he was kind of expensive, you know, like, they didn't want to spend that much on a backup. I totally understand when you have Matthew Stafford. Matt, and he is not as good as Matthew Stafford. Let's get that straight. Right. But, like, dude, he's here for with a defensive head coach with a losing record, I'm pretty sure. I don't – when he's without Tom Brady. That's not saying much. Um, but he he has been a head coach before. And he was not good with his quarterback. So, dude, he's got everything going against him. But he's got that, that offensive line, Jason. You told me the other week they are better – then what everybody expected, you know, with uh, Jensen. I think Jensen might be back. The redhead that they uh, they got, Tristan Wirtz, that redhead with no teeth that they drafted that made big news. And they have uh, Godwin, who's still dealing with injuries all the time. I don't know what the fuck his deal is. But, you know, he got like 150 yards last week. And now here comes Mike Evans, dude. I don't know how you'd... Mike Evans is going to the Hall of Fame or some shit. He's got to be. This guy is like literally so good with everybody. <laughs> Yeah, he's just a big target who can run fast, and he's a great route runner. I remember when he came out of Texas, and he was like a first-round draft pick, and I was like, whatever. A&M. Was it Texas A&M? Yeah. And, uh, dude, he's been good every 1,000 yards every season. So, Yep. Uh, can, can we, we talked about earlier that uh, Nick Chubb is probably the most underrated uh, fantasy football player. Can well, we say that it. he's probably – Jason, good we, point. Can we say that Nick Chubb is the most underrated running back and then Mike Evans is the most underrated We're saying that uh, Nick Chubb does not receiver? get the respect he deserves. Well, guess what, dude? Mike Evans yep. does not get the respect he deserves with everybody, dude. Even goddamn Baker Mayfield. If Joe Flacco was there, this guy would have fucking 2,000 receiving yards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's even crazy because, like, the guy in our league, Tyler, was trying to trade him for, like, the first five or six He's weeks. Like, hey, and, I like, and I was like, oh, yeah, I bet you would, asshole. I was like, I would, right, too. Yeah. I would try to trade him, too. <laughs> like, would it get some bikes and got, like, a huge touchdown? And I was like, yeah, good luck with that. I'm not going to buy that. 
Right. I wish but, I would have. I should have traded Keenan Allen for his ass, dude. Yep. Here Keep we go, going. dude. But Baker Mayfield, Jason, are you ready for this? Yeah, let's do it. The Buccaneers offensive line has earned a 72.7 pass grade. That is a top 10 mark this season. Carolina's defensive line has earned a 66.8 pass rush grade. That is 24th this season. So strength versus weakness right there. The Panthers defensive line has generated a 25% pressure rate. That is 29th. So that is what? One, two. That's fourth worst in the league. That is terrible against this great blocking uh, unit right now. Carolina's defensive line has generated just 87 total pressures this season, dude. That is the fewest in the entire league. Entire league, Jason. And Baker Mayfield, he uh, current, current passing yards prop is set at 233 yards. That's not great. But still, man, he's finished below that just once in the past six games. So he is overdoing everything that people think about him. I mean, like, at an 80% time, at an 80% rate, pretty much. That's amazing. So he's thrown the fourth most passing yards in the last six weeks with a clean pocket at a, like almost 1,200 yards. Dude, he's also thrown seven touchdowns from a, from a clean pocket from week 7 to 12. That is the fifth most in the league. And he's going to have a fifth. So he's going to be a top five quarterback this week because this goddamn team can't generate a pass rush against him. So let's see what else, dude. So seven touchdowns. Oh, I think I said that. Uh, shouldn't be expected to. Yeah, that's what I'm. That's pretty much it, Jason. So yeah, Baker Mayfield, dude. He's facing a terrible pass rush. He's got a great pass blocking offensive line. This fucking team can't score the ball. Given Jason, I did see Brace Young actually did well this last game, and Tampa Bay can't stop the fucking pass. So that is one concern. But hey, if they keep on running up the score on them. That is even better for Baker Mayfield. That is, I love that analyst from uh, week 18. But what about week 17 when they play against the Saints? What did I say? <laughs> they were playing against Carolina last week? No, they played against Carolina in week 18. They played against the Saints this week. Why the fuck was it showing me this stuff then? No, <laughs> this is not right, Jason. Yeah, uh, I just looked it up because one of the big hits is like, Derek Why Carr do people pay him. money for PFF? Why do people pay money for PFF? <laughs> PFF? You're going to fucking suck the dick, dude. Oh, my God. Let me look at this. Dude, if PFF did this to me with the offensive lines. Let me see. Week 17, right? I'm yeah. about to lose my shit. I'm about to lose the Buccaneers versus the Saints. <laughs> I'm about to lose my shit. I'm about to lose my shit. Dude, fucking PFF, I'm going to fucking go down there and I'm going to fucking kick your fucking ass. Sorry. PFF? No. What? No, I, I was going to say, don't be sorry. I mean, it's not your fault. <laughs> PFF? Oh, my God. But pick, Baker Mayfield against the Saints. Let's roll, too. That's even better. All right. Yeah, one thing I want, I do know about Are this matchup serious, is... Jason? Oh, yeah. my God, dude. I, PFF, dude. I, I fucking swear to God. I'm going to lose my shit. I do believe Marshawn, Marshawn Latimer is out again. And that's usually a pretty tough matchup for Mike Evans, but that's not happening in this game. That's and like a, talk- that's like a revenge game. Do, do, don't they, are they the ones that fight every game? Yeah, they do. They, they get each other's grills every game. And I we're talking about clean. You let me talk so long, Jason. <laughs> I didn't know how to stop you, dude. And then we're talking about like clean pockets. The New Orleans Saints, they are, I think, like, uh, let me see. I think they're third from the bottom in, uh, yeah, they're 29th in sacks per game, only get to the quarterback 2.1. So this guy should have, Baker Mayfield should have a clean pocket. He is I'm not my quarterback. He is my quarterback for this week. We saw what the Matthew Stafford just did, and now the Saints are still going to be on the road. Divisional game. Tampa Bay needs to do it. This is going to be another big game for Baker Mayfield. Jason. Yeah. How crazy is that? The PFF literally wrote up a whole fucking article on an offensive line versus a defensive line. <laughs> they're just going, they're already thinking about week 18. Oh my God. I was like, you got to be. That is insane, dude. That is in fucking insane. PFF, dude. 
hope I'll sponsor our show so I, I can go down there and kick whoever's fucking ass this is. You go to hell. You go Woo! to hell and you die. All right. So I don't care. Baker Mayfield against the Saints. Same logic applies. So just go for that. And then, uh, yeah, hey, dude, if you're in a uh, week 18, I know who my start of the week next week's going to be, Jason. Uh, who? <laughs> Baker Mayfield? <laughs> Dude, that is crazy. I was I'm I'm looking at the article right now. I'm looking at it right now. It's literally came out this morning for week seventeen. Dude, yeah, that that sucks. <laughs> but you had me going. I was like, dude, I thought because I was like giving advice on like TikTok. Well, I'm and starting. I was like, I'm starting. <laughs> I was like, uh, what is going on here? All right, all right. Fuck them. You know what I say? I say fuck them all, dude. Let them rot in hell. I don't give a fuck. All right. I'm moving on to the next one, Jason, because you're starting Baker, right. Baker Mayfield anyway. I don't give a yeah, fuck. Yeah, I'm starting him. He's still my guy. Yeah. All right, let me look at my paper real fast, because that pissed me off really bad. All right. Uh, all right, I've got a couple real fast. Gardner Minshew, let me write that down. Gardner Minshew at home, Jason. Ten touchdowns, three interceptions, 92 passer rating at home this year. He is averaging 20.5 fantasy points per game over the last four home games, dude. And conversely to that, he's going against the Raiders. Dude, Aiden O'Connell, I can tell you this from experience, is the worst goddamn quarterback in the world on the road. He is literally the worst quarterback in the NFL on the road this year. So plenty time of, time of possession for Gardner Minshew this week at home. That equals fantasy success. Yeah, it was a O'Connell last week. I think he only threw for like 60 yards, 70 yards. Gave the Chiefs a lot of opportunity to score. They just they they couldn't because the Chiefs are not the same Chiefs that we all know. Fucking Taylor Swift came in here and caused a goddamn love story. I know. Like, dude, get the fuck out of here. I don't. I'd rather have a good fantasy team than watching fucking. Well, yeah. I'm so pissed off at PFF right now, Jason. Oh my god. It's like tell Taylor just go write a song about it. That's what she's hoping for. Yeah. All right, Jason. Next up, last one. Secret start. I got Noah Brown, Jason, CJ's crowd coming back. Tennessee allowing this 9.2 yards per coverage target in a 19.4% explosive play rate in man. That is the three worst figures in the league. And I say that and I'm like, oh, well, no, Brown has not been good against man. So he needs the help, dude. His strength is zone real fast. Tell me what you think about CJ Stroud. If you think he's going to pick up where he left off, because I got to pee my pants. Yeah. Did you say they were home? Yeah. Yes, they are home. C.J. Stroud is pretty damn good when he's at home. I have Nico Collins. I'm playing this week. I'm pretty excited for uh, C.J. Stroud and the connection with Nico Collins. I hope Neo, uh, Neo, Neo, the chosen one. I hope Noah Brown doesn't take too much away from my guy. But, yeah, we'll see what happens. He was uh, last week against um, the Browns. He was in, He ended up scoring a touchdown. I think he... Well, him and Nico Collins both scored a touchdown, but Brown got over 10 points last week. So, yeah. Uh, so, no, Brown, not good against Z- man coverage, but... Oh, yeah, he's only got 0.29 fantasy points per route run. That's not great. Dude, do you know who... Okay, Jason, I saw this today. The number one uh, wide receiver in points per route run versus man is... Mike Evans. How did you know that? Uh, am I ser- Are you serious? Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, yeah, because he's he's pretty good. One point zero. I I always watch because we're you and I are doing these stats all the time. We're like zero point five, zero point three. Oh my god! Yeah, and it's like this motherfucker's got one point oh points <laughs> per route run against man. Yep. So it's if it if it's man and he runs a route. He's going to get you at least one point. It's like, oh, we had, uh, you know, he ran 15 routes today versus man. Well, motherfucker, he got 15 points. It's like, oh, my yeah. God. Yeah, and he probably did. He probably got 60 yards and a touchdown. So, but Noah Brown, dude, I just want to say with Tank Dell out, I don't give a fuck if he's good at man, good at zone. Who he's going against is CJ Stroud is playing the football game. Give me Noah Brown, dude. Noah Brown's going to get like 15 points PPR this week. So, and I, I think he's like 45% owned right now. Uh, Baker Mayfield's still under 50% owned. Gardner Minshew's still 50, under 50% owned. So go go out and pick up these players, Jason. 
Yeah, and you said Noah Brown is playing against the Titans, right? Who Correct. have what one of the worst pass defenses in the league. So again, hey, comment down below if you use PFF and if you've seen deficiencies in this before, because I'm about to pay for the entire year, Jason. So uh, please let me know if I should not do that, because I like PFF. This is the first time I got screwed. Let me know yeah. behind in the, in the comments below, because I can't. I don't have the, I don't have a, an analytics team, dude. Later on, Jason and I might have some people be like, "Hey, can you tell us this? Can you tell us this?" And then they can find that oh. shit out. Right yeah. now, we don't. PFF has been a very reliable, good resource this year. I cannot so, believe yeah. they did the wrong week, dude. I have not seen that yet this pissed. year. I would be pissed too, man. <laughs> I was like, dude, I relied on that like for my goddamn thing. Right. Woo! You put so much trust, man. Trust, Jason, is broken. Have you ever had a broken heart? <laughs> no, man. Well, guess what? It sucks. And I want to die, and I want to cry, and I want to fry. Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> but guess what, guys? Everybody out there that had a broken heart, or girls, it gets better. You will find <laughs> the one for you that makes you feel the way you want to feel. Just wait. Time heals all wounds. There you go. And uh, to that bitch who's my ex. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I'll be right in hell. <laughs> yeah. I hope you never find that fuck. You're never going to find that fucking person. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is Tyler. No, 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 no. We Comment down below. Let us know everything you want us to know. Jason, send us. Uh, we, hey, we need help, dude. Please tell the public how they can. Oh, wait, shit. No, we already said that. Please send Damn. us. Hopefully we earned a thumbs up. <laughs> Tyler's distraught, man. He, he I, I, said some shit. I was like, I got she got real. She got real. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully we earned a thumbs up. Hopefully we earned a subscription, man. Hey, this show needs to get big. Please help us get big. It starts with you subscribing right now. So please help us do that. Jason, please uh send us out for next week. We got Tyler, are you doing your live show Sunday? You going back? Hell yeah. Going back, and then we're going to have the wrap-up. And then for week 18, Tyler and I, we're still going to do a player pause, but we're going to do it on actual other games besides the Thursday night game. I don't think that we have a Thursday night game. So this was probably our last uh, player pause just for Thursday night. We're going to expand. So next week, we will, re we will be reviewing our player pause, but for different players. Yep. And I think that's what we're going to continue on in 2024. We're expanding. We're evolving. We are Evolution 3 and Pokemon, as they would say. We're turning to that Charizard. Jason, I'm looking at the 1999 Fossil Dragonite Holographic. It's only 30 bucks. Should I buy it? No. So, and those videos coming up, make sure you check them out. We will talk to you then. I will talk to you then in those videos. Deuces. Hey, this is Tyler, Big Ted Ward. Jason, the lucky bastard, you the well, this is a fantasy goddamn red zone, and we appreciate you.